What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new video. Today guys, we're gonna be giving you guys some beginner tips and tricks for wrapping your own car. Now I wanna preface this video with saying I am not a professional when it comes to wrap. However, I have done it multiple times on my own personal cars. These are a few of the things that I've learned to help you guys when starting. A few of the tools that you guys are gonna need are some pry tools for any trims that you wanna take off on your car. Each car is different, but most of the time you are gonna have to take off some pieces of your car. You're gonna need a microfiber towel, some soapy water, clay bar. You're gonna go ahead, wipe off the car with the soapy water and the microfiber towel and then you're gonna use more soapy water with the clay bar. Clay bar the panels that you're using. You guys are gonna need some razors, uh, some very sharp razors. Those are a must when it comes to cutting wrap. And you're gonna need the squeegee tool as well as a heat gun. All right, guys, so we have my car almost fully wrapped. The last things that we need to do are the fenders. So we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to properly wrap a panel. We're gonna go ahead and do a fender right here. We're gonna show you all the correct steps on how to do it. Clay barring, cleaning it, all that fun stuff. Let's go ahead and jump right into that. All right, guys, so the first step is to go ahead and wipe down the panel that you're working on. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe down this fender real quick with some soapy water. All right, guys, so once you wipe off the fender, we're gonna go ahead, spray some more soapy water on here and uh, use this little clay bar and then go ahead and clay bar the whole fender to get all the particulates out of the paint. When you put on the wrap, there's nothing like little specks underneath the wrap. This is just to ensure that the wrap looks as good as it possibly can. Once it starts getting a little bit dirty, you can go ahead and just pull on it, pushing it together until it looks pretty clean. And then we just keep going back and forth until the whole fender is smooth. And then also guys, another little tip is to use a microfiber towel around the corners on the bottom so that when you're using, when you're tucking in the wrap, it actually sticks. If there's too much dirt under there, the wrap will start peeling up and you don't want that. Once everything is done with the clay bar and the fender is completely clean, we are now ready to go ahead and lay down the wrap, grab the wrap, cut it, show you guys kind of how to cut it and then lay it down onto the fender. As you can see here, since we already did most of the car, I have this specific piece cut out for a fender. I even wrote it over here. It's like the perfect size for this fender. Typically though, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the roll and uh, kind of measure it out on the panel that you're using. Get a tape measure. That's one thing I forgot to add to that list over there is you're gonna need a tape measure to actually properly measure the exact length that you need. This one though, I already measured it. This is perfect for this fender. So all we're gonna do is uh, lay it down. You do need two people ideally to uh, lay down the wrap. It makes it a lot easier and you can make it a lot faster too if there's two of you. So we have Dial over here. He's gonna help us lay down this wrap. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead, take off this little tape. And then Dia is gonna go ahead and grab one side, right over here. And we're gonna take off the front peel. Some wraps have this, some wraps don't. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and take this off. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So as you guys see, we already had this cut out perfectly for a fender. Let's go ahead, give it one more wipe to the fender. Make sure there's no dust or anything. And then we're gonna go ahead and take off the back side of the wrap. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and pull, make sure we get the whole fender. Is it good on that side? I'm good. Yeah, good. Let's pull as tight as tight as we can. And so essentially what we're trying to do is create as much tension so that most of the wrap actually sits flush on the fender. So we're gonna go ahead and create a line right in the middle and then work our way up and down um, to get it a perfect flush fitment. And then guys, this is where the heat gun comes into place. Um, when the wrap is starting to get a little bit crinkled, get a little bit of heat and uh, like this. You always wanna use a good amount of heat.
All right, you guys, when you are cutting the wrap, once you get the wrap on there and you're ready to cut and tuck, you wanna give yourself a good amount of extra wrap um, when you're cutting it so that way you can actually tuck the wrap in properly so that way it doesn't come peel up really easily. So if we were just to cut it like right at the edge, this will start peeling up like pretty quick. So you definitely wanna push it under and tuck it in and make sure there's enough for that. So that is another little tip that I would recommend doing is leaving a little extra on each side, corner, whatever you wanna call it, the edge. Make sure you have enough to be able to tuck it in. Once you guys are ready to tuck, make sure to give it a lot of heat so that way it actually sticks. We're gonna heat up the whole corners. And then we're just gonna go ahead and tuck it under. Alrighty guys, so as you guys can see, we went ahead and cut it and then tucked it under. Now you wanna use a lot of heat when you are tucking in the wrap. If you cut too much, the wrap can start peeling up. If you have too much cut, dirt can get under and it will start peeling up as well. So you need that like perfect amount just for it to uh, not peel up. But right now it is looking pretty good. This fender is a little bit complicated because it does have a grill on it. Some fenders don't have anything on them. Uh, this one happens to have like a little uh, turn signal grill on there. So we have to do some extra cuts. So you guys can kind of see how we're tucking in as well over here, making the nice cuts and then tucking them in. And then right over here, we're about to start cutting this and tucking this underneath as well, making it look nice and pretty. It is slowly getting there. It's not too difficult if you have two people. If it's one person, it can take a long time and it is much more difficult to do. So make sure you have a second person helping you. What I normally like to do is I like to make a big cut as in get as much excess off, get yourself a nice line and then see how much you need and then cut accordingly. Alrighty guys, the fender is now finished. As you guys can see, it turned out really, really nicely, mainly because of the preparation that we did. We took a lot of time to prep the paint and get everything sorted before we actually put the wrap on. When it comes to wrapping any car, the biggest thing I always tell people is to make sure you take your time with the prep. If you prep everything correctly, it will turn out really easy and uh, it will look really nice. Make sure to clay bar the paint every single time before you put a new panel on. Make sure to wipe it down right before you put on the wrap. Make sure to use a lot of heat. Use the heat gun a lot. Make sure you stretch it over with the heat. And then after you are done installing the wrap, make sure to give it even more heat across the surface. Make sure to get all the bubbles out because sometimes what will happen is you'll put the wrap down and if you leave it and don't put any heat, it will start bubbling up. So you want to make sure, get a lot of heat on there, get rid of those bubbles and the wrap will look a whole lot better. A few other tips I would recommend is try not to wrap your car on a really cold day. Try to do it on a warmer day. When the wrap is cold, it gets really hard to stretch out and it can sometimes break. So you guys definitely want to make sure you're not doing it on a super cold day. Make sure to do it on a warmer day. Make sure it's a warm environment. If you can do it inside a garage, try not to do it outside. A lot of dust gets picked up when you're doing it outside and uh, it gets underneath the wrap. So try to do it in a nice clean space where there's no like heavy amount of dust or dirt. Try doing a clean area that is warm. Another thing I recommend is have a lot of razor blades. When you guys are cutting the corners, you wanna make sure that your blade is sharp. So just have a lot of razor blades on hand, swap them out often, make sure it's sharp so that you don't cause any issues. If the blade's not sharp enough, it just really slows down the process and you can accidentally ruin the wrap. Make sure that when you are cutting, you lift up the edges and don't cut onto the paint. The last thing you wanna do is when you're putting on a wrap is to accidentally cut the paint underneath the wrap. That scratch will be there and you definitely don't want that. So try to avoid that. For the front bumper and the rear bumpers, typically it's like the most difficult part of the vehicle. You're gonna to have to use a lot of overlays. On this front bumper, I had my friend Junior help install the wrap. He put a lot of overlays like in this area over here, this area, and then that area in the corner. Essentially the overlays, they're just small pieces that are cut out 
placed on top of each other on top of each other because it is really hard to get one big roll across this whole bumper and mold it into the correct position. Use a lot of overlays on the bumpers if you have to. Try to avoid it on every other panel though. You don't really want overlays on the quarter panel or the hood or anywhere else on the car. The only acceptable area for overlays are the bumpers. So hopefully this video helped you guys understand how to uh, get wrap done a little bit easier. Hopefully it helped in any sort of way. If it did, make sure to subscribe down below guys. Make sure to give the video a like. I would really, really appreciate it. Especially if it helped you guys in any way possible. And like I said, I'm not, I don't do this for a living. I don't wrap cars for a living. So keep that in mind that I just do this as a hobby. This is what I've learned from my personal experience wrapping multiple cars. This is what's helped me. I think the car turned out pretty great, all things considered. Don't expect perfection when you guys are wrapping your own car. Remember, there is a large learning curve when it comes to wrapping cars. I still have not perfected it myself. I do not claim to be a professional when it comes to wrapping. I can make the car look decent. Just keep that in mind, guys. I'm making this video to help you. What I learned that helps me. Huge shout out to Dioff for helping me in this video. I'll go ahead and leave his Instagram down below. And with all that being said, remember to stay safe, stay happy, and stay in that project car. I will catch you guys later.